Okay, folks, we've got four different cans here. This is the rosin from the music store in Maranac. I've already rosined them up, but uh, I'll demonstrate. I, I think the more rosin, the better. The rosin serves essentially the same function as the rosin on a violin string. <laughs> you can hear that already. Ah, nice. So this, just for the hell of it, I tried a uh, Trader Joe's Fair Trade Organic Bolivian Blend coffee container, which is, there's as much paper as there is metal in there, but the metal isn't really the important thing. It's the resonant chamber. So you hold the string with varying degrees. Oh, by the way, be careful, because when you poke a hole in the bottom of the tin can, there's a little spike that pokes up, and I already cut my finger on that, trying to just reach in and draw the string through real sharp. So anyway, here it goes. You get varying sounds out of it by varying the tension in the string, but check this out. <laughs> That's not even my favorite. So that's the coffee container. Here's the basic little soup can style can. I think this was a dog food can. <laughs> that it reminds me a lot of a turkey call, but a thousand times easier to make. This is a slightly bigger can. I think that was a 13 ounce and this one's a, I don't know, 16 ounce, 18 ounce. You can see the rosin flaking off. I think this one's my favorite. This is actually a tea tin. In the 1870s, when these the newspapers were talking about this nuisance, a lot of them called it the mustard tin uh, device or mustard tin something. And I look mustard can, I think they referred to it as. And I looked this up, and mustard came in a tin. A uh, rectangular container that's similar to the fancier tea containers that you see nowadays. So check this out. <laughs> Whoop, my string came. Oh. All right. Well, you get the idea.